Greetings, everyone. You, yes, you, are tuned into the Trust and Believe Nomad Cast. I am your humble host, Damon Anderson. I thank you for everyone listening today, whether you're in your vehicle or working out. I thank you for everyone for watching this video on YouTube. And I appreciate all the comments, appreciate all the support. Hope everyone is having a great Tuesday. Tuesday is great for me and my family. Hope everyone had a great Monday yesterday. I know Mental Monday Combat, we talked about depression, which is never a happy subject unless someone seeks and and attains help, uh, which is always a good thing. Um, Yeah, so if you, again, like I stated yesterday, if you're going through that, please stay in the fight. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Jim Valvano made that statement at a, ESPN award show years ago. I think it was in 93. He said, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. I mean, it was cancer based, but still it applies to all walks of life, you know? Um, but this particular Tuesday morning is great. I had an appointment this morning at the VA clinic on base. Uh, shouts out to the VA. Those guys always treat me well when I go in there along with the other retirees as well. It's always a good, a good thing when you walk into the VA and they still call me, they still say master sergeant. And I talked about this earlier. It still feels great to hear someone say master sergeant. Uh, not saying I, I got this ego where, you know, I wear the rank, you know, around all the time, even though I'm retired. But you know, when someone calls you the rank that you retired in while you retired, you know, it provides the nutrients and ingredients to feed that ego. <laughs> It's all good, man. It's all love. Um, opening remarks today. You know, the latest things I want to talk about in the news is uh, some emails that surfaced about John Gruden, former coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. And these emails surfaced from 2011 to 2018. Um, I'm not here to defend anybody or none of that because we all fall short of the gl- glory in a sense. But, you know, the thing about it, and it kind of is a prelude to what we're talking about today with the old school. There's no way, especially with society now, because I think everyone kind of understands and the way society is moving now with the advent of social media and people are starting to learn different things. And you'll be able to kind of look up under the rug or look up under the hood, if you will, to find things that happened in the past. And we know the past, sometimes the past has been great. Some the past, sometimes the past has been good, depending on situation. Um, but you know, you have these emails that this former coach sent, and they had you know non-constructive terms about certain people, and just it was just you know it just wasn't good. And you know, as a leader of men, you have to hold yourself accountable. People should hold you accountable for certain things. Now, am I saying that everyone? hasn't said anything bad about somebody, no matter race, color, creed, or gender. People have done it, and sadly, people will continue to do it. Um, But at some point, we have to evolve as people and not talking about somebody because of their physical features and not talking about somebody because of their gender or who they choose to be. At the end of the day, worry about you, worry about your family, worry about your life, worry about your employment, Worry about the things that matter to you because all this other stuff around you, hey, man, just live your life the best as you can, clean as you can. And, you know, offending people is is not fun, especially, you know, you know, growing up in a city, in an inner city, we used to make fun of people all the time. That was just kind of the thing to do. But as you grow, as you mature, as you progress in life, you realize that, hey, Chopping this person down, crippling this person's ego, that could lead to depression. That could lead to suicide. That could lead to someone maybe participating in an unfavorable action. So we just got to watch ourselves. Us as humans, man. We, we, people deserve better, treat people better. Ain't nothing wrong with, you know, being nice to someone. Hey, you ain't got to walk around and say hi, hi, hi all day. No one wants that, but. Hey, man, if you got anything negative to say, just keep that junk to yourself and, you know, and beware because they can dig up emails from the past, as we've seen, 
and probably more things are going to come out. Protect yourself and your family. Say the right things. And just like the saying with the old school drug dealers, you'll never have to look over your shoulder. All right. All right. So those are my opening remarks for Tuesday, October 12th, 2021. Let's go ahead and move into part two, ladies and gentlemen, part two of do we really miss the old school up next? That's what I'm talking about. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back to the trust and believe nomad cast. Again, I am your humble host, Damon Anderson. So today, October 12th, 2021, I almost forgot the year. <laughs> We're talking on a Tuesday, talking on a Tuesday. And as previously mentioned, today's subject matter is, do we really miss the old school part two? Right. So what I did, I broke it down into four additional categories. I think last time I had uh, lifestyle, travel, technology, and occupation. This time I'm going to go with television, cooking, automobiles, and phones. Kind of simplistic, but, you know, you get the idea. So the first thing we're going to talk about, and do we really miss the old school, is television. Now, everyone says, oh, I miss uh, I miss the old school way. You know, back in my day, you know, we wasn't lazy with the remote control. We got up and turned TV. That's great. I remember as a child having those old school TVs and, you know, before we had a remote, the child was the remote or the person that was closest to the TV was the proverbial, uh, proverbial, I should say, remote. Now I ain't got to worry about that, you know, but even just thinking about those TVs back in the day, I remember my dad had the, remember the old school, big floor model TVs that weighed like 7.6 billion tons and they had the four legs and the four legs kind of spread out to kind of balance the TV. And then coupled with that, the TV had the record player on it. And it had all this other stuff. I think some of them, some of them had like the audio systems, the amplifier, all those things, all in one. Huge cabinet, freaking TV, like an old school dresser, but with a TV and audio equipment on it. And you got up and you changed the dial, and then you look at the picture. Of course, back then you was like, man, this really looks good. So when you hear people talk about, oh, they don't make them like they used to, well, it's, it's a reason why. They don't make them like they used to. Just think about now, 2021, we could talk about, again, what we used to like, but would you really, do you really want to go back to looking at those old school TVs where the picture clarity was like looking through mud? Now we got 4K, 1080, 2160. We got all these, these new modern technologies infused into these brand new watching devices as we call them televisions i can see a person's pimple i can see if i'm watching a game i can see the dirt on the uniform much more clear i can see everything with the crispness and the sound the clarity the the base of the voices i can hear all that i couldn't hear that back then because for one i didn't know that was even possible unless you was actually around someone in a face-to-face a close, you know, semblance with each other. But, you know, again, all these guys talk about all oh, the, the old school TVs. And and then it got to the point, if you lost the remote control, especially with them old ones, okay, can't find a remote. Let me take the dial off the TV. Let me use these freaking pliers. And now I'm turning the channels. And the sound of it, do, do, do. Let me go to channel two, do, do. Oh, no, the game is on channel four. Do, 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 do. Oh, no, go to channel seven. Do, 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 do. And I'm speaking from the Detroit stations. And then we go to channel 50. Do, 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 do. Channel 20. And it just goes on and then get the Windsor Canada station, channel nine. And then I even remember back in the day, too, just saying college football, for example, since this is college fo football season, go blue. Remember, all we had was the game of the week. You had that one game that was on ABC or maybe CBS, and that's all you getting, Doc. You ain't getting nothing else unless you read the daggone 
uh, Detroit News or the Free Press or you get a USA Today or something like that. Now I can, you know, Saturday I watch football, college football. If we don't have nothing to do, I typically, especially during the fall season, I will go, come down here to the man cave and I will watch college football from the pregame show on ESPN to that last uh, Pacific uh, West Coast game on Saturday night. And I'm telling you, I could do it. I love it, right? But back in the day, we didn't have that. Television, the signals wasn't as strong. The, the footprint wasn't as strong. The bandwidth wasn't as strong. Now we have everything. We have, like I mentioned, these 4K TVs. Remember them big back TVs? The TVs that had that big old backside to it, right? It looks like you got a freaking elephant sitting in this thing. And they were heavy. Oh, but they gave you a handle embedded in the back of the TV. And maybe you had two handles on the side. Still, sometimes that was like an eight-man lift trying to get these TVs up, right? And then if you put them on a shelf, I remember when we were in Germany, we had one of them, this is like 2000, no, this is like 2000. We had one of them big back TVs we bought at the PX. It was an RCA. So definitely telling my age here. It was an RCA TV, and we thought this TV was phenomenal. We went to the PX. We paid about almost $400 for it. And if I remember right, it was a 32-inch, right? And we had a German shrunk, which is the thing to do in Germany. And had space just enough, I think, for 33 inches. So, oh, we could squeeze this TV in here. No problem. So me and my wife brought the TV from the PX. We shoved that thing into the shrunk. Man, we're great. So the last couple of years we were in Germany, we were noticing that the TV was shrinking. Well, shrunk, shrunk the freaking uh, the shrunk, which is crazy to say. But basically, it was just caving in because the weight of the TV and the the daggone um what you call that the shelf that was holding the tv wasn't equipped to hold a tv of that weight we didn't care shove it in there i ain't gotta do all that now big old tv on the wall 80 plus inches 70 plus inches on the wall 65 plus inches on the wall now i have space to accommodate if i want to decorate around it we didn't have that. I remember we had a TV when I was growing up. We had a lot of TVs growing up. But I remember we had one. It was a, a tall TV. I don't remember the, the size of it. But it was kind of tall. And it was on a cart. <laughs> I don't know if my mama still got this cart or not. But it was a cart, like a delivery food cart. It wasn't that, but that's what it looked like. And you put the TV on there. And then at the bottom, it had like little shelves and you put your magazines or whatever. And that was it. And this is like, man, life is great. Look at our TV. So to all the people that are saying, oh, I miss the old days where the TV, you know, the TV had integrity. We had American made companies. Da, da, da. Look, RCA, American made, gone. Zenith, American made, gone. So let's go ahead, and I don't miss the old school when it comes to them TVs. Even like the old school TV shows. Do you really miss some of them old school TV shows? The the plots, the comedy, the dramas, whatever is involved with it, yes. But the way some of those old school shows were shot in terms of camera, in terms of the way it was portrayed on the TV, yeah, it looked better now because they went in and kind of cleaned everything up you know, to align with the modern technologies. But do you really miss all that sitting on the floor, crisscross applesauce watching TV? No, man. Put that joke on the freaking wall, man. It's a flat screen. That th thing, TV's nowadays thin as a, a sheet of freaking paper. Put that thing on the wall, man, so now you got space for other things. And the TVs are bigger. Now I got a remote. I can just talk to, re to the remote, ESPN. Or I can have Alexa. Control my TV, which Alexa is another problem. It's like another, having another child in the house. We got all these modern technologies. So go ahead with the, oh, I miss the old school way of TV. Yeah, you may miss some of the old school shows, but there's a lot of shows out there dedicated for that particular audience. And it's, it's actually cleaned up now. They made it high definition. It actually looks great. So go out there, man. Get you a 4K TV. Get you a 2160 or 1080 and upgrade, man. It's so much better. 
them old school TVs, don't miss them. I don't miss the hernias they gave people. I don't miss the back problems they gave people. No, flat screen, put that secured. Don't, don't hang it on the wall. Secure it on the wall and go about your business. All right, let's talk about cooking. Cooking back in the day. Oh, we missed the cooking back in the day. Oh, grandma. Grandma, you making Thanksgiving dinner? Yes, baby. What you making? Oh, I'm making this and I'm making that. And I'm making this and I'm making that, right? Grandma had to get up and even the grandmothers, the, the old school mothers, whoever was cooking, the aunts or whoever, even the men was cooking. Thanksgiving dinner. Let's just put Thanksgiving in perspective because that's typically the biggest time we gather as a family or friends or however your dynamics of your household is set up, right? So grandma, in order to ensure that we have a proper feast to feed 7.6 million people in the family, Grandma, no, in order to make this happen, I cannot get up early, early on a Thanksgiving day to prepare this. No, I have to start cooking the night prior to ensure everything was great. Some households will fry all the chicken the night prior or they would do the turkey or they would bake all the desserts the night prior. Whatever they had to do to ensure that meal and the meal was quality. Don't get me wrong on that. The meals were and still is quality. However, the time that it takes to cook food has been subtracted. The time that it takes to prepare food has been subtracted. The reason being, now we have more technology involved with some of these stoves. These stoves now perform at an optimal performance that we've never seen. And then 10 years down the road, these would be obsolete. So, yes, I miss the old school way of preparing foods. Because even like now, if I cook for my family, it's a certain time I like to make certain things. If I know something cooks longer, I cook that first. If I know something has a shorter time to prepare and or cook, I make that last. And I'm one of them type of people. I like to time things a certain way. So I want all the food made. No matter what I make, I want it made i want it completed usually you know within close proximity of each other that way okay if you're frying all the chicken and then you're still waiting six hours the chicken is cold but the other stuff is hot just the key advice if you whatever you're making if you're making a large dinner cook your foods that takes the longest cook those first if the foods take the shortest time to cook and prepare you make those last that way, by the time the stuff that takes forever to cook and you finish it, the shortest time, it all aligns together. It all meets up. It's a healthy arrangement when it comes to food, right? But what I'm, the bottom line, what I'm saying is when it comes to old school, we miss the old school way of watching the grandmother in the kitchen cooking. You know, that was fun. Watching mom cook in the kitchen. That was fun. Watching the aunts cook in the kitchen. Watching my dad cook in the kitchen. That was fun. That's where... For me personally, just speaking for me, that's why I learned all the tricks of the trade, the techniques to cook, how to prepare, how to measure. Do I really need to look, you know, take a measuring cup? I can freaking eyeball it and know, okay, that's a third of a cup. That needs a fourth. Uh -uh, put a little more water in that. Hey, where's the nutmeg at? That's where you learn some of those old school things. So from that standpoint, old school cooking, I think it's phenomenal. It's timeless and it's carried on throughout generations. However, the time it takes to prepare certain things are different because now you can have these large meals. But now instead of overworking that old school stove, now I got a stove with five eyes and it has a griddle in the middle. Oh, by the way, that oven is not only an oven. It's also coupled and could perform as an air fryer. Oh, that air fryer is used. You know what? It's another air fryer on the counter. So we have a, a lot of assets right now to be able to cook those old school meals, but now the time is short. And then if you say, well, I don't want none of them old school meals. They was full of fat. They was full of salt. They was full of cholesterol. They was full of all these things that's, you know, not conducive to good health. Okay, now we have the Hello Freshers of the world, and we have all these other entities that would just ship you fresh produce, fresh products, 
fresh meat. So now you ain't got to go to the store and buy none of this stuff. Now it takes time, 40 minutes out your day to prepare some of this stuff. And you have to have a level, level of cooking you know, knowledge to be able to cook some of the stuff. And a lot of times you may have to have a lot of patience. I know like in our household, we use, we do hello freshes. I cook them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we kind of just, you know, get whatever, a pizza, you know, whatever. But typically Monday through Thursday, I cook a hello fresh meal and I know, okay, I like to have stuff. I start cooking probably around one o'clock that way about two o'clock, I'm finished with everything. So then my daughter comes home. Food is ready for my son comes home from school. Food is ready for him. My wife gets off work. Food is ready for him. So now I'm not spending 55 hours out of a one day trying to cook a meal when I got hello fresh to do it. Now I could cook a big meal. Trust and believe that no, no issues. However, the time it takes me now to cook certain meals, I don't miss the old school way of getting up early and, you know, seasoning this. Because when you cook those meals and all the people that's cooked can tell you, it takes a toll on your body, that constant sand, standing, that constant moving around. And you got to be really thinking. You have to put a strategic approach to cooking food. Okay, if this is taking 15 minutes to cook, let me peel the potatoes. Oh, is that still baking? Well, that's still frying. Oh, shoot, let me take this out the freezer. Hey, that's still in the oven. So you have him, you, you, you pretty much fighting on multiple fronts to ensure that meal is as quality, as tasteful, looks great as it can be. And that's the challenge of it. So old school, yes, I miss the old school kind of the preparation, just watching, like I said, my grandmother, my, my father, my mom, my aunts watching them cook the food. They still do it to this day. And that's why I, I learned all my traits. So definitely thank them for that. So I miss the preparation of it. But what I don't miss is the time it takes to cook all that food. Because this, especially me, as I've gotten older, it takes a lot, man, to be standing up and cooking and doing all that. But so I will say I miss the old school in that sense. But do I really miss the old school? Because now I got I can employ these air fryers. I can employ this stove that got six eyes. I can employ the stove that has the oven co-located with a air fryer. Oh, by the way, did I forget the uh, Instapot? If I want to roast some meat, throw that joke in that Instapot. No more sitting with the old school pan. Y'all know these old school pans. It was black and they had them little white sparkles in it. Oh, I got to put this big old turkey on here. Oh, I got to put all oh, this. No, nah, man. Technology. With the equipment that we use now for cooking, I prefer that. The only thing I miss about the old school is just watching my elders, my mom, my grandma, my dad, my aunts, watching them cook. Because it was, and they, anyone, any, not just my house, anybody's house can attest to this. It was a work of, work of art. Everything was synchronized. It was coordinated. It was aligned. Perfect. So in that sense, I miss the old school. My next one is automobiles. Oh, the automobile. Oh, I miss having that, that 72 Regal. Oh, man, remember I used to have that Buick Deuce in the quarter? From the aesthetics of those old school vehicles, I miss them. The technology of those old school vehicles, I do not miss. I like getting in my Ram and it's voice activated. I don't have to do too much. Put that sucker in drive, and I'm out. Oh, I'm backing up. HD camera in the back. Oh, I got sensors on the side just in case, just in case I go into another lane, right? Oh, it's raining. I ain't got to freaking mess with the windshield wiper. It's an automatic detection on the windshield. Now, that part of technology, that part of do I really miss the old school? I miss the old school when it, the, the aesthetics of the vehicle the sexiness of an old school Camaro, the sexiness of an old school Buick Deuce in the quarter, 225 for all you young folks, the Buick Regals, which I had that burnt up. I miss all those old school vehicles. And some of them was long as freaking aircraft carriers. And I can even remember again, telling my age where 
my father had an old school Buick, and I don't remember our car seat. I was sitting in the middle like, hey, we're going down the street? Yeah, you can't do that now. But even look at the old school car seats with those big steel bars going around it. You ain't got none of that now. So in that sense, the only thing I miss about the old school with the cars, with the automobiles, is the aesthetics of the vehicle. I think those vehicles could pack a punch in terms of if you get in an accident, you know, they wasn't made of the fiberglass and some of the plastics we have now. But I think safety-wise, the vehicles are safety now. Because as I mentioned, if I'm running in another lane not paying attention, I got sensors. I ain't had that back in the day because, for one, the freaking engine was so freaking loud. So I couldn't hear a freaking signal. But now I could just ride in my truck. So it's almost like it's whistling going down the street. Unless I hit them, you know, hit that Hemi, then I let let everybody know what time it is, right? Um, but you didn't have the sensors back in the day. You ran into someone's lane. The only noise you was hearing was a honk or the sound of a, a crash, which is unfortunate, right? So when you talk about automobiles, for me personally, I miss the old school, the way the cars, I guess, were designed in terms of the sleekness, the way they looked. But do you really miss the old school? Because I love this technology. I love pushing buttons. I love looking at the screen, and all I got to do is hit the button and Siri go to the next station. Or just, you know, those things just controlling. Now, one thing that they have, and I don't know if I want to be a part of it, I know Tesla and some other companies have the uh, self-driving. Eh, I don't know about that one. I think I'd rather just drive myself. So I'm going to give a big ups to the new school with the technology. But I miss the old school way of the cars used to look. Last one, folks. We're talking about phones. These phones, these freaking iPhones, we love them. The Samsung folks, they love them. All these companies, phone companies, oh, AT&T, oh, Verizon, you know, what's the other one out there? All these, these companies, T-Mobile. I remember a time, I'm going to go back to the Michigan Bells. We called them the Ma Bells. And every state had a bell because the bell was, ac was actually named after Alexandra Graham Bell with the whole telephone. But Michigan Bell, you know. Illinois Bell, everyone had a bell, and people worked in those. I still remember the Michigan Bell that used to be on, uh, what was it, Linwood and Davison, I think. This is Detroit now. Uh, I don't think, I think the bell is still there, but it's just been repurposed for something else. But remember the old phones, the house phone. Oh, the cord was 700 miles long. And as I stated in the other old school video, it coiled up, and it's almost like a snake freaking trying to, you know, strangle you to death, right? And even before that, remember we had the phones where you got to hit the, the turn, to put your finger in the thing, and just turn. Oh, I got to get to an eight. Oh, I got to get to a three. So you had all of that, right? And the phones for that time was great because now I can call the operator. What freaking time is it? At the tone, the time would be whatever it was. I ain't got to do none of that stuff now because one, wear a freaking watch and the phone tells you every freaking thing, right? And you look at how we migrated from that to the, the traditional landline phones, which a lot of people don't have anymore. And then we go to the cordless phone, put that sucker on the wall. Oh, by the way, pull the freaking antenna out. The antenna was like 700 freaking miles long. So you walk around the house with this silver antenna walking around with this freaking cell phone looking like a bootleg drug dealer. And then we go to those brick phones, the cell phones, you know, those things was heavy. Those was monstrosities. I even remember my father had a Lincoln, uh, a Mark seven back in the day. And he had a car phone and it was in a bag. So, and like his, uh, in the, the middle console, the phone was in the bag, but the bag was embedded into the console. And then he would have to unzip the bag, <laughs> take the phone out to make a call. You know, back in the 80s, I'm like, man, this is great. My dad got a phone in his freaking car. But now I was like, man, you got to do so much to make a call. So in that sense, I don't miss the old school way of phones. And then just even taking a step further, how we have phones now, 
You can pay all your bills on your phone. You look at your bank information on your phone. You can't do none of that stuff back then. If you had to order something from a phone, you was talking to a customer service representative. You was reading off an order number, and they would tell you, hey, you will see your product in four to six weeks. Now I ain't got to talk to nobody. I go to freaking Amazon, do, 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 get whatever I want is here within a week, or even sooner, but some things even later. But the point I'm trying to make is we miss the old school. Oh, I miss the way the phones used to be. Remember, they used to have all those old cell companies. I remember we in Germany, of course, we had T-Mobile, which I think was Deutsche Mobile or something like that. Then you had Sprint, Verizon, AT&T. You got Cricket. You had uh, it's a few other cell phone companies, but now it's really only three because, for one, T-Mobile absorbed that going uh, Sprint. Remember, Sprint used to be a player in the cell phone world. I remember when we was stationed in Fort Urban, California, and anybody ever been out to that part of California, Fort Urban's like in the valley, right? So we had came from Fort Hood where we had Sprint phones, and the reception was great. No issue, right? These are like the old school flip phones. So when we got to Fort Irwin, I remember we was at a, a location on Fort Irwin, and we're trying to talk. And the guy was like, you know, not to get in your business, but what cell phone service? Oh, we go with Sprint. He said, I'm going to tell you, you guys are going to be stationed here. You will not be able to pick up a signal. And that phone had three bars. Tell you how long ago this was. That phone had three bars to it, right? We could not make a freaking call. So he told us, he said, I work for Sprint, and I would never use Sprint product. He said, just get you a Verizon phone. This is like 2000, maybe three. Late two, 2003, early 2003. And we've had Verizon ever since. It was the times I've been to Japan. We had that that local phone, but uh, local phone company. But since we've been in America, we've had Verizon with no issues, right? So the point is, yeah, you missed the old school, the phone, maybe the old school phone conversations, the way the phones look because it's nostalgic, but do you really miss the old school? Because God dog, I love these iPhones and the iPhones have progressed so much. It's like, it's almost the same thing, but it's not, you know, Apple, they changed one tweak and then, Oh, this is the brand new iPhone, whatever it is. And it's like, Oh man, I got to get it. Cause I'm one of those guys too. Right. I'm a sucker for advertisements. All right. And I know it's more I could go into when I'm talking about phones and different things like that. I just want to keep this short. So today we talked about televisions. Do we really miss the old school when it comes to televisions? Uh, cooking. Do we really miss the old school when it comes to cooking? Do we really miss the old school when it comes to automobiles? And do we really miss the old school when it comes to phones? So it's a lot. I may have to do a part three on this because this has been like exciting, exciting. So tomorrow, let's go ahead and transition. Tomorrow is way back Wednesday have a story tomorrow to celebrate way back Wednesday. And then of course, after way back Wednesday, we'll do uh sneaker stories and turn around Thursday in the week. And again, set the conditions for the following week. But tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, it is way back Wednesday. Hope you enjoy today's episode of talking on a Tuesday where we had part two of the old school. Do we really miss the old school? I appreciate everyone tuning in, whether they were visually uh, happy or by audio, were they happy with everything with the show? Leave those comments, subscribe, follow the likes, you know, all those, et cetera. Tell your family, tell a friend, tell the coworker, and even if you don't like them, to subscribe to the Trust and Believe Nomad cast. Again, I've stated and I will continue to say it. This Nomad Cast is my therapy. I enjoy doing it, and it has been great so far, and I'm going to keep, keep this thing going. This is episode 14, ladies and gentlemen, and we will continue to rock and rock and rock on. Again, today was talking on a Tuesday, talking about part two of Do We Really Miss the Old School? Tomorrow, way back Wednesday, stay tuned. Peace and love. Be safe, y'all.